Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this history-defining moment. Let's ask ourselves this critical question. If Nigeria was a business since independence, would we say that our leadership have turned it into a profitable venture? Today, we take Nigeria as seriously as we take a business. We are therefore on a search for who will become the next president of Nigeria. <laughs> would ask each of our candidates to step up and tell us why we should vote for them as the next president of Nigeria. I'll start with my first candidate. I want to be your president because it is my turn. So <laughs> when you say it is your turn, what about your qualification or your track record? What do you have to show? I am a very successful businessman with three wives. <laughs> one from the north, one from the east, and one from the southwest. If I can rule a house with three women, then, of course, I can rule Nigeria. Thank you so much, sir. You can have your seat. So now we'll call to stage our second candidate. I'm a chartered accountant, and um, I have a PhD and three degrees from the University of London. <laughs> yes, I'm very learned. If we elect you as our president, what do you go do for us? Tell us. People love me because I, I show a lot of love. You know, you, you, don't, you don't meet me and remain the same. No mind them, you don't know, go do anything if you go president. They go steal the thief money. Good bro, they don't go build. School, education, hospital. My people practically begged me to come. Yes, they've been begging me, my wife, my brothers. After this, you come to me, I, I change your life. Yes, I believe it's a tit for tat. You know, you rub my back, I rub your back, you know. Because you can't know me and I'm in power and I will not help you. We have heard from two candidates. Now we bring in our third candidate. You have the floor. Why do you want to become the next Nigerian president? Let me introduce myself. I'm Dagoru. With a talk correct meat, Shaki, they display leg. <laughs> Nigeria presidency, woman, they come out. You know, you surprise me, oh. See, man, woman, it no matter. That person will be do the work. One yes. Good. The woman who stands before you today is a strong advocate for meritocracy and true democracy. I am here to tell you that I have the capacity to serve and to lead the good citizens of this country and to ensure that we make Nigeria great. Since our independence, over $400 billion of oil revenue has been lost to what? Corruption. And a country where the average citizen has, quite frankly, lost his sense of esteem. I have undertaken various roles in my community, so you can say that I have felt the pulse of the people. And I say this with all humility. I have what it takes to know what needs to be done and to know how things could work. Ladies and gentlemen, if I am elected, rest assured that I will run a government that is accountable, transparent, and is given solely to the equitable fight against corruption. <laughs> Amongst many other factors, I personally think that there are three factors that are very critical to national development, and I will explain. We have stable power, we have smooth transportation system and mechanized agriculture. Now, my government promises to concentrate, I mean deliberately, concentrate efforts on building and growing each of these sectors. Because, <laughs> did you know, my people, that currently Nigeria's national and external debt stands at, wait for it, wait for it, $92.62 billion. Is shock you, Abi? I do not need to stress the need to radically diversify this economy. Yes, we need to turn efforts from, from the ever fluctuating oil exports and concentrate, focus our efforts on growing other revenue generating sectors that can make viable exports. Now, true, a big, big, maybe you would. Let me interest you in uh, some statistics, I mean. United Nations data 
has put our current population as at Sunday, the 23rd of January 2022, at 214,083,229. I'll give you in figures so it sinks in. That would be 214,83229. Persons that fall in the age bracket of 0 to 14 make up a whopping 42% of this figure. I'm sure we have fathers, mothers, uncles, and aunties seated here. What are we doing as a community, as a nation, to make sure our young do not decline into drugs and delinquency? What are we doing? Because you see, education is the passport to a future. And that is why my team, I will work tirelessly with a well-meaning team that would ensure that innovative educational opportunities are put at the fore Hey, my people, we live in a world where man is traveling to space. Mm. Colonies are being set up in space on a different planet. We're talking mind-blowing technological advancements. This is the world our children need to be prepared for. Not just so that they can subsist right now, but they can be part of tomorrow's world. I would like to address those uh, elements who continue to insist women have no place in leadership. <laughs> My sisters, my brothers, you see brain, you see heart, they don't get gender. Yes. Good governance, no get gender. Yes. yes. Because this country is known as the motherland, right? It means anybody, male or female, that is passionate, patriotic, and capable can lead this country. You see how to just open your mouth in there. As long as we have the poor, the vulnerable, the marginalized, especially our brothers and sisters living with disabilities, at the focus of our policy, anybody, male or female, can lead this country. Yes. And brothers and sisters, it will be my privilege to serve you Nigerians. <laughs> Madam, Go and take your form. We will vote for you. Yes. 2023 is almost here. This message is from Akin Fadei Foundation with support from Mark Arthur Foundation.